Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the page, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome to this episode of taxes, write-offs, and expenses for Skip the Dishes, DoorDash, but also just being a subcontractor in general. First of all, let me preface this. I am not an accountant. I'm not a tax expert. I'm just somebody who has some experience with what we're going to talk about today. And uh, this isn't going to be a super in-depth video, guys, telling you exactly what to do and all this kind of stuff. My best suggestion for that is hire an accountant. Um, if you have no idea what you're doing, if, you're, if you don't want to delve into this, this thing, um, keep track of what we're going to talk about today. But um, hire an accountant. They'll help you out. They'll make sure it's all done properly. Um, so that's number one. Number two, depending on where you're located, some of this advice may be applicable, some of it may not. So uh, that's why I'm going to keep it quite general, just so it applies to more people. Okay, so that's that's the, the preface of this video. So first of all, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, taxes and write-offs and uh, a couple of those things. So I'm going to write some numbers on the board and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do this on very, very simple numbers, very round numbers, just to make life easy. So let's say you have a, an, an income of $100,000 at your normal job. You go to a company, um, you make a salary of $100,000, they take off taxes and they send it to the government. So we'll just again keep numbers simple. We're going to assume that the tax rate is 25%. Okay, so your taxes is 25%. So over the year, you end up paying $25,000 in taxes, okay? Leaving you um, a, the, the amount that you actually get paid every two weeks, twice a month, once a month, whatever it is, of uh, $75,000. Okay, so that is your take home pay, right? Keep, again, keeping numbers uh, rounded and simple. So, what is a write off? What is, is all that kind of stuff have to do with this. So you have a job, you're making $100,000, you pay this much taxes, um, this is what you take home. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about a home-based business for, um, for a long time, I don't even know the number of years, we've always had a home-based business. Now, why do you have a home-based business? To help with taxes, okay? Um, sometimes they're super, and when I'm talking about home-based business, I'm talking about the network marketing. So to give you guys some big names, just so you'll understand what I'm talking about, Herbalife, Maluka. I mean, there's there's kajillions out there. Uh, my wife and I have always been part of a network marketing company. Okay, so what does that do for you in this scenario? Okay, so a network marketing company. Let's say one where you uh, you start it and you lose money in the first year. Okay, so what's going to happen is your initial investment, let's say, is. Um, $2,000 to get started in this network marketing company. Okay, start. And then over the course of the year, you end up buying some stuff every month. So you end up paying, um, let's say another $6,000 to stay in the business. Okay. Um, now, these are where the important things about tracking expenses, uh, which applies to our contract work that we're doing for delivery companies and also home-based businesses come in. So you might have actually paid out of pocket for all, all this, uh, this amount of money, okay? But we also have things like um, travel expenses, and this again is where you wanna hire an accountant because it could depend on the industry. So travel expenses, fuel, uh, vehicle, um, Clothing. There's there's lots of different expenses. So let's say over the also in your house you can you can have a section of your house that's dedicated as an office for that home based business. Okay. So let's say um, and the, these are where write offs come in. So let's say we found another uh, ten thousand dollars in expenses. Okay. Actually, we're going to say twelve thousand dollars again just to keep these numbers um, simple. So we have twelve thousand dollars in additional expenses or write offs. Okay, so all of our expenses for the year is $20,000 for our network marketing company. So how does this apply? So the government, at the end of the year, you file your tax return, they say, okay, well, 
Uh, Mr. So-and-so made $100,000. He paid $25,000 in taxes. He's all good. He doesn't owe any more money. But what happens with this additional expense uh, for a home-based business is you tell the government you made $100,000, but we've got $20,000 of write-offs. Okay, that equals $80,000. But at your regular job, you've paid $25,000 in taxes. And they say, whoa, hold on a sec. Mr. Joe actually only made $80,000 and he paid $25,000 in taxes. So what actually happened was he overpaid taxes because 25% of 80,000, again, we're keeping this simple, is $5,000. He overpaid uh, his tax bill by $5,000. So what's gonna happen is at the end of the year, you're gonna get a return of that $5,000 with a home-based business in this scenario, okay? All right, so that's scenario number one with why we have always had a home-based business. Now let's apply this to um, driving for Skip the Dishes, driving for Uber Eats, whatever it might be, contract work, okay? So it's the same scenario where let's say you have a job and you make $100,000 a year at your job, okay? You pay $25,000 in taxes, and then that means you take home $75,000 throughout the year, okay? But in the evenings, you go drive for a delivery company. So you're, you're a subcontractor, okay? Well, you're gonna have an income from that. So let's, again, keep these numbers simple. And we'll just say, okay, you've made um, $1,000 a month. So you've made $12,000 over the past year. Okay, so plus 12,000. In income okay so now what happens is the government would look at this and say okay well you've made hundred and twelve thousand dollars you need and you only pay twenty five thousand dollars in taxes well you owe an additional twenty five percent of this which is uh, four three thousand dollars so at the end of the year okay you'd actually end up paying uh, twenty eight thousand in taxes so um, number one, it's a good thing every month, every week, whenever you get paid from a delivery service, set a little bit of money aside because it doesn't matter how many write-offs you have, you're still going to have to pay money at the end of the year, okay? Or it's going to come off the amount that the government pays you back, all right? So that's the way the government looks at it, but we can offset that with expenses, all right? So um, how does this work? Well, basically, uh, just thinking about driving for uh, Skip the Dishes and DoorDash or, or any of the delivery companies. Number one, we've got fuel. Okay, fuel's a big expense. Um, if you're buying a vehicle and you've got monthly payments, a lease payment, and again, this is one of those things that diff that's very different depending on where you're located. So we have vehicle. Okay, we've got kilometers or miles driven um, we've got some initial startup costs okay we've got our bags and background check all right what else can we think about well um, let's say it's getting to winter time like it is now you need a new flashlight to be able to deliver safe so there's just general equipment okay equipment um, you need a new pair of boots because you use them primarily when you deliver food, okay? That could be a write-off. Now there's things that you have to be careful with, and again, this is where your accountant comes in because it can get too extreme, okay? If you're, um, if you're on shift and you're buying some food for yourself for, for meals, um, you might be able to write off some, some meals, okay? So the important thing is to keep track of these things because they add up real quick. You might not think, okay, well, I only spent $80 on boots, right? Oh, well, I, I bought a new winter jacket or, or whatever, um, but that stuff adds up quick. Oil changes on your vehicles, 
Okay, we've got maintenance. Maintenance costs. All right, let's say you need to get your vehicle fixed. Falls under maintenance costs. You need new tires. Um, you need uh, oil changes on a regular basis. All that falls under maintenance costs. Um, so all those things could offset some of this $12,000 in income. Now, how does that look? Well, if basically, if, we've, if we made $12,000, $1,000 every month, but all of our costs for being a subcontractor or running our subcontractor business, so we've got $12,000 in income. Okay, at the end of the year, we, we pull our receipts together, we add all this stuff up, and maybe we um, have $4,000 in expenses. Okay, so we subtract that. So we're actually only paying taxes on $8,000. So that's how the write-offs work. Now, 25% uh, of 8,000 uh, is $2,000 taxes. Okay, so now we, instead of paying $3,000 on the 12,000, now we're only paying $2,000 on the 8,000. I hope this math works out because I'm just doing it quickly in my head. So that's how write-offs work in, in this scenario is basically you're writing that, off, that amount off of your income and you're not paying taxes on that amount. So some people don't quite understand what a, what a write-off is in a business. Basically, it's, it's money you're not paying taxes on, okay? So it's, that's essentially in a nutshell how it works. All right, guys, lastly, how do I keep track of this stuff? This is, again, just how I do it works well for me. Um, there's a lot better ways you could do this or a lot more in-depth ways, but uh, I'll tell you guys how I do it. So first thing is I track my um, kilometers, track my income every day and um, stuff like that. So there's actually a spreadsheet link listed below. Um, it's to my, uh, I think my OneDrive folder and you can download that spreadsheet, change it however you want. You guys can do whatever you want with it. But uh, that's how I track my my uh, my driving stuff okay all the information's in there and then I also use it to uh, look at the averages if I'm improving uh, getting worse that kind of stuff okay so that's how I keep track of things the other thing I do is I've got a shoebox literally a shoebox under my bed and that's where I toss all my receipts so I uh, bought tires this year obviously getting oil changes on the car all those receipts go in there um, you've got your registration vehicle insurance, um, anything that I buy that pertains to my driving, okay? Uh, new, new footwear, all those receipts go in there. Um, obviously my gas receipts, I actually put those in my money bag, in my, uh, in my skip bag, and uh, every once in a while I take all those receipts out, put them in the, uh, the shoebox, okay? Now, what do I use? I use TurboTax. I don't actually hire a, um, an accountant. I do it all myself. So I use TurboTax, but I use TurboTax for um, small businesses, subcontractors. There's like the basic one and then the next step up. It's like $100, but you can do your um, your spouse's tax return, lots of different stuff with it. The nice thing about the TurboTax, and this isn't a paid advertisement, guys. The nice thing with TurboTax is it's got a whole questionnaire system, right? So it's going to help you find things that you might be missing. Um, and I find it's really, really helpful. So what do I do come January? I sit down, it takes me about two evenings to do this. I take all my, my uh, receipts and I put them into a spreadsheet, uh, just a Excel spreadsheet, and I have a column for gas, I have a column for vehicle expenses, parking, like I just columnize everything out. Okay, then when, you're, when you go into your TurboTax system, it'll ask you, how many kilometers did you drive in total? So 100,000 kilometers in the year. How much of that was for business? 50,000 kilometers, whatever the numbers might be, right? How much fuel did you use? And those, those are numbers that are important to keep track of because you're obviously not writing off all your fuel. You're only writing off a portion of it, okay? Um, and, it, and it has everything itemized on there for you so you're able to, um, to figure out where stuff goes. So what do I do? I, I list all these things out on my spreadsheet. Uh, I go into my TurboTax program, plunk all these numbers in, um, and that's how I figured it all out. So it's quite simple, and um, that's how that, that's what works for me. That's Skip saying I start my shift in 30 minutes. Um, so that's basically it, guys. I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Again, wanted to keep it fairly simple for you, but um, yeah. 
So hopefully you got something out of this. I know there's gonna be questions, guys. List the questions below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, please. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you uh, this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button down below. But again, list your questions down below, guys and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. I might not have the answer for you. I can give you the general answer, but again, depending on where you're located, it could be a totally different thing that you, uh, you do. So best to check with somebody in your area who knows what the tax laws are. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, great evening, wherever, whenever you're watching this, and we'll see you next time.